Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 55 of Bardic Quest, the show where a group of British trained actors tell fantastical improvised stories through the medium of Dungeons and Dragons. So, first of all, if you haven't yet checked out Bardic Questions, a reminder that it's sat on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's two hours worth of Q&A with myself, Anina, and James talking all things behind the scenes of Bardic Quest and beyond. Uh, so check that out on our YouTube channel or your podcatcher of choice. Um, but also a big thank you to our friends over at Sirenscape who allow us to use their music and ambience. Uh, it's a great app. Do check it out. And uh, I would highly recommend adding it to your game tables for added immersion. Um, so that's sirenscape.com. And we thank them, of course, for allowing us to use their music and effects. So, without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Party Quest. Last time, after having defeated the various barbarians that were holding Saga captive, our heroes settled down for the night and discussed briefly the interpersonal things going on within the group before going on watch. Saga decided to interrogate, perhaps, accost <laughs> one of her <laughs> barbarians, uh, asking for more information on the situation regarding Drail Bonebreaker and his perhaps overblown demise. Um, or not, as the case may be. Then she settled down for the evening, um, and Thoric had a nice little dream, a lovely little dream, uh, whilst he was in his sleep, and awoke with a little bit of divine influence, perhaps? Yeah, a little That's bit it. of divine trauma. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of divine trauma. We love a bit of divine trauma. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as he was discussing said trauma with Saga, they were interrupted by the arrival of a certain halfling bard, who, before he had the opportunity to tell them that he was being chased, it was revealed that indeed... He was being chased, which is where we pick up now at the start of a new encounter. So let's roll initiative. Da, 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 where's my battle music? Battle music. <laughs> Go. All right. Um, so let's see now. So we have, in fact, pre-rolled some initiative because it's nicer for you guys that way. So, um... Let's start first of all with you, Sergey. You are in the middle of this here camp. The light of the campfire is surrounding you. Um, and you can just make out in the darkness the silhouettes of whatever it was that was chasing you, um, but not clearly enough to really see them. You have been assigned by Saga, one of the barbarians that is currently out at the perimeter of the K 
camp. So you can move, we're, we're going to be using the strongholds and followers retainers rules, so they're going to act on your initiative and they will essentially attack when you attack. Um, but you can move your barbarian around or you can move, what would you like to do? So uh, Sergei, who is probably still running, hasn't stopped jogging on the spot. <laughs> uh, now this barbarian is kind of walking up to Sergei, is kind of that classic how he's been running away from the big bads and now he's got the big bad. So he's going to start slowly turning back in like a little semicircle, uh, saying, uh, uh, Saga, Sonic, no time to explain. It's time to kill. <laughs> and then go running, charging with my barbarian at whatever I can see, my sword, <laughs> flailing wildly. Um, I would also like to point out uh, his trousers are kind of half down slightly, and there are a few leaves scattered as though he was caught mid. <laughs> I'll, I'll let your imagination flow the rest. So you, you, to be clear, you are running with your trousers barely up. Yes. With your barbarian. Yeah. Into the darkness. I mean, that's intimidation, exactly. if nothing else. And you, you don't have dark vision. It is a fear tactic. <laughs> That's Sergey. <laughs> okay. Kamikaze attack. Charging wildly back at the enemy. So, you charge into the darkness, and you do see, as you, even though you have your barbarian with you, you charge in, and you can just make out the outlines of uh, some of these creatures. They're about your height. That's about as much as you know. And there are four directly in front of you. And a little to your to your right, uh, there are uh, another three, maybe. Uh -huh. But you can uh -huh. only make out rough outlines, so it's going to be hard to hit them. That's fine. I will just one hand holding my trousers up. I'm not had time to do the belts or the, the ropes up or anything. You are, I should say, you are actually one of these creatures. You are actually, because you ran into the darkness, you are technically engaged with one of them at this point. Okay. I will do whatever I can to hit any of them as my... <laughs> Presumably with your rapier. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Um... So yes, could you, in that case, then please um, roll to hit with disadvantage because you are rolling in the darkness. Nice round six. Okay, you you frantically swing your rapier around, uh, but unfortunately, you don't actually connect with anything. Um, now, because you have missed with your attack, you do get a second opportunity to attack with your barbarian. Ooh. Okay, um, so that would be basically a plus six to the attack roll. But you're doing it with disadvantage because he doesn't have dark vision either. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Just like you, he's swinging his axe frantically in the darkness. He's a little bit bemused, really, as to why he chose to follow you in to the darkness here, but he's swinging his axe around violently and, and like you, striking absolutely nothing. Which one is he? I need uh, to know if it's four is, or... That is Ivor. Okay. Um, does Sergei think, because Sergei has not met this barbarian, yes. does yes. Sergei think he is now being attacked from two sides? <laughs> uh, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> oh my god, they're everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, it is now their turn. Uh, right, right. So, the creature that you are engaged with is going to... He is going to swing a blade at you. You can't quite make out what this weapon is in the darkness, but he's going to swing a blade at you. Um, but that's only going to be 10 against your AC. 
So that misses just. It, it, you just see it glisten just in the in the firelight. The firelight be- from behind you just reflects on the blade, which just gives you enough uh, time just to kind of sidestep it. Um, but then you do see it. Well, it kind of you 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 can't quite make out the outline of it anymore. It's just gone. And you hear something scurrying away into the darkness. And then, Sergei, uh, you hear several arrows fire off against you. The first one hits you. The second one flies over your shoulder as does a third. Um, And you take, from the one that hit you, three piercing damage. As it just gashes your shoulder. That's fine. That's that's fine. Um, And then, from your right, you hear another three arrows fire off at you. The first one misses, the second one misses, and the third strikes you. This time catching you on the thigh, doing five piercing damage against you. Ouch. Um, okay. So that brings us to one human in the woods. Running towards the campsite that you can see in the distance. You can't quite make out who's there, but you can make out shapes, dark shapes, and you can hear the familiar cries of Sergei as he is hit by arrow after arrow. Johan, what would you like to do, sir? I know those cries of pain anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a making ball. (laughs) 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 And Johan comes a running. (laughs) I once again charge to the halfling's defense. Now, uh, because you are, you're essentially in the dark at this point, um, Mm. All you can do is is make out these shapes um, surrounding Sergey, and you can see the the firelight in the distance. Mm. Um, that's that's probably about thirty feet away from you, where the campfire is. So you are in the darkness at this point. So you are basically attacking with disadvantage from where you are. But let's not forget, as a rogue, I am the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So what would you like to I do? am not. <laughs> um, well, Zoom, I can't hear much because what we've heard is arrows and cries of pain. Yes. Uh, then, actually, as I'm dressed in browns and blacks, I'm probably quite difficult to see. So I might actually... Uh, and you're, co- you're, to be fair, you're coming also from behind them, really. Oh, they're, great! Because they're at, they're on the boundaries of the of the campsite, so you're coming from deeper into the woods, and their attention is not focused on you. Okay, then I stab. I, I do some backstabbing. Then I, I run straight at them. Is what okay. I do. Okay. Uh, now you can just make out two groups. Okay, mm. there is uh, one slightly to your left. Um, probably about three of them and there's another one to your right also probably about three of them there's only about ten or so feet between the two groups but where would you like to focus your the one on the left or the one on the right essentially I I think I'm gonna go right okay all right hey all right Um, all right let's go with it then so um, they have acted so you can't use your assassination feature 
Um, and you won't have advantage against them either, so you're not really going to get to do much sneak attacking mm. um, because you're in the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, but let's roll to hit and see what happens. If you if you would have had advantage for any reason, I can't think of any why you might, but if you would have had advantage, then at least it counteracts the disadvantage. Well, at least I can disrupt their arrow fight. Or not. <laughs> I don't suppose, on the off chance, that an 11 <laughs> touches okay. them, does it? <laughs> so, you charge in, rapier in hand, ready to strike, and you strike at what you think is uh, one of these creatures, but you you don't have to hit anything. Mm. It just kind of moves out of the way. Presumably I skid in whatever Sergei left behind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a while away. Oh, oh fair enough. I've been running miles. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that's impressive. Uh, wow. So, Saga, you are now in the centre of the camp. Mm -hmm. That You are right next to the campfire. You see yep. Sergei ch charge to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, you have one of your barbarians about 20 feet behind you. Um, yep. You can see, you can make out Sergey from where you are, mm -hmm. and very, very, very faint outlines of something in the darkness. Okay, um, I'm gonna move forward enough that I can still see. See what I mean? So I'm not going sure. into the darkness. Trying to move a little bit forward, and then see if I can make out more of a shape. To aim it with my crossbow. Okay. Um, so, because essentially there's so little light where mm -hmm. they are, there's, 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 you don't really manage to get a better yeah. view. Um, so you will be attacking with disadvantage. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, in that case, I'm going to use goading attack. Manoeuvre and go, <sighs> trying to get them to come towards me, which means towards the fire. Nice, nice, so... nice. Uh, okay. Um, in which case then, so you added, do you add a d8 to the attack, to the damage roll, is that right? Let me check. Goading attack. Yeah, I add to the damage roll. And the target must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, great. Um, so I'm literally screaming, come they, at me! Do they have to make a saving them. throw if you hit? They make a... Target must make a wisdom saving throw. Throw on a failure, the target has disadvantage okay. on all attacks against so, targets. So other that than doesn't matter if you hit or not. So that's kind of no. cool. Uh, my other question is, what are you doing with your barbarian in terms of his placement? Is he just with you? Um, I want him to go running in and try and find one. Okay. So because of where he is, uh, he's going to be able to dash essentially, but not. Yeah. Not attack. Well, he can dash and be a no. meat shield. All right. Uh, so he's going to charge in, and he's he kind of steps just in front of Sergey. Mm. Um, so he's between Sergey and these creatures. Um, okay, so you're going to let's roll your goading attack. Uh, so let's so roll. Do, to you, hit, do you want to roll to hit first, and then yes. we we'll do the? So I'll do it with my crossbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many of them. Eighty. Oh, twenty-two. Was that with the disadvantage because of the darkness? Okay, it's a 22 still, because the other was a 24. So. Oh! Hmm. Okay, cool. And then, then my D8. Oh no, that D8 goes to <clears throat> the damage roll. So okay. let's do damage first. Which is 15 plus my goading attack, which makes it... Why, why isn't it? It's not rolling a d8. I don't understand. There we go. There we go. An extra three. Okay. And um, a wisdom saving throw for whatever I yelled at. Uh, well, I would, except that you've just downed the thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. No saving throw necessary. You you fire off your crossbow mm -hmm. and you hear a ah! as whatever it is that's out there just drops yes. to the floor and you hear a, a, a bit of a thud. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay. Anything else that you would like to do? I don't think no, if there's anything you no. can do, to be fair. Uh, no. That's me done. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so that then brings us to you, Thoric. Now, right. you've, you've got a little bit better of a view from where you are. Um, not much <laughs> better, because you're still so far into camp. Um, but you can just make out that these creatures are goblins. <sighs> Again! Thoric winces like, ah, oh, yeah. Fucking, like, heft his hammer off and just, I mean, yeah. Fuck them. Um, so, as the only, how far away are me and my barbarian from uh, the the fray between um, Sergei, Johan, and everyone? Uh, from where you are, you they are just outside of your movement, your standard movement range. So, if you wanted to attack in melee, you'd have to dash first. Um, but you do have a barbarian who is a lot closer. Um, he could get into a, one of the groups of three of them um, with a, within sort of 10, 15 feet or so. Cool. Um, so, uh, as Thoric is the only person that has dark vision on the party, I think, he's just watching them all just like flail around in the dark. He's just like, no, he's, he's next to you. He's next. God, you got to do everything yourself, haven't you? Um, <laughs> I hit one. Just say. I no, 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 you do. <laughs> he's like, is that. Well done, Saga. <laughs> Good for you. Um, Thoric is going to start running towards them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're out of his range, so he's only going to run his 25 feet. Sure. Um, I'm going to unhitch uh, Gladys from my um, belt. Uh, and oh no, sorry, I won't be able to. Because mm, that'd be an action. Ooh, ooh, that'd be an action. My intent mm. was to cast light on Gladys and throw her, but I can't do both. No, you can't. Can I get past the? Um, am I next to the my barbarian? Um. Or will I pass him? Yeah, but not right. Not right. Not right, right next to him. So I mean, you could, like, you could, you could maneuver him. So if he's running towards the same direction, you could, you could have it so that you cross paths. Basically, if he's going to be able to get into melee, but I'm not, I yeah. just want to be able yeah. to like get in contact with him before he gets in. Oh yeah, that's doable. Cool. Um, in which case, I'd like to go up to him and be like, "Hey, what, what's your name?" Uh, this one that you're dealing with uh, is Bor. Boar! Give us that. I grab his um, battle axe and I cast light on it. <laughs> oh! And then I give it back to him. I'm like, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Boar kind of runs towards you following your commands. And as, as he runs by, you just grab hold of his battle axe and you cast light as it brightens up the battlefield. Now, what's the um, what's the range of the light? Is it is it sixty or is uh, it thirty? Give me one second. Uh, a B C D E F G. Consult the book of hands. Uh, light. Um, it is a uh, twenty foot bright, twenty foot dim. So forty foot. Forty foot. Okay. All right. Cool. So he like, as he's running in, so he he's charging into the the group that you're charging towards, um, and you do, uh, Sergey, Saga, Johan, you do see the area light up, and um, you see the fallen goblin just in front of of you guys, and then there are two more goblins directly in front of you. One that you definitely recognise. Oh, no. No. It's not, is it? No. It fun it is. is. No, it's not. It's Splug. Splug! No! And Told you. Told you so. Told is, you so. He is looking 
uh, as though he is wearing slightly finer gear than the last time that you saw him. Um, and he is not happy to see you in the slightest. You little rat. <laughs> um, this is the thanks you give us? Let me at him. Let me at him. And uh, he... Uh, he actually looks around as the as the light kind of shines on him and he sees you johan and he 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 looks at you in particular and he says i'm gonna get you what did i do (laughs) (laughs) we're like his nemesis he's he's had like a whole like arc and we don't even know who he is we can't even remember what we did to quote thanos i don't even know who you are You tried to slit his throat, Johan. That's not exactly narrowing it down, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> In Johan's defense, he does that a lot. <laughs> um, but Thoric, you actually have uh, the barbarian who hasn't yet attacked. He's now engaged with a group of, of these creatures, these goblins. Off uh, with their heads. All right. I thought you might. So could you roll to hit, please? He now doesn't have disadvantage because of the light. Um, and it's a plus six to the roll. Great. Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen will unfortunately miss. Uh, so he, he swings, um, but uh, but the light slightly... He wasn't expecting the, the light to glare into his eyes quite so brightly, so he, he just slightly misjudges the <laughs> swing of his axe. I'm just like, bored. I'm not, you know. What's up, mate? Come on. <laughs> uh, They're all only right. goblins. <laughs> uh, so, Sergey, you're now up. You're being flanked on either side by two barbarians, one of which is essentially under your control mechanically. You've got Saga <laughs> just behind you. You've got Splug and another goblin directly in front of you with Johan just behind them. What would you I like am to do? eyeing Splug, and I would like to tighten the belt around my trousers. <laughs> Splug, you interrupted my nasty business. Now it is time for the business to get nasty. And then I would like to cast Dissonant Whispers at second level Ooh, okay. against this traitor. Traitor. Um, Okay, so talk me through Dissonant Whispers, it's been a while Wisdom saving throw from Splug Okay Uh, They must succeed it It is a DC of (laughs) It's only 12, they've got to beat Uh, 12 exactly So that's a pass That is a pass Ah damn Uh, Okay, on a Successful save, they just take 2d6 of damage then, and then they, uh, on the first save, uh, on a successful save, yeah. 2d6 of damage, do you want to roll that for me then? I would love to. Six, and a four, ten. Ten points of damage. Uh, do you want to describe Dissonant Whispers to me? Uh, as I say, this business is about to get nasty, this, like, discordant melody is going to just thrum out from my mouth hitting Splug. Ooh. And then, as a bonus action, I'd like to be like, um, and your hand, you're looking excellent, giving him bardic inspiration. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, Splug is just there, like, grabbing hold of his slightly larger than normal ears and just, like, letting out a scream of, of agony. Yes. Um... That's probably you done then, isn't it, Sergey? Yes, that is me done. Okay. Um, oh, the barbarian. I was just about to say, Ivor has not yet uh, attacked. He will attack what the other one that isn't Splug then, in okay. front of us. Sure. Um, so uh, he's going to run in um, and engage with this other goblin. Uh, let's roll to attack. He doesn't have disadvantage now because of the light from cool. uh, from four. Uh, roll the 10. Is it plus 6? So it's going to be a plus 6. So that's actually going to hit. So do you want to roll the damage? What's the damage? Uh, so the damage is... I think it's 1d12, I think. But let me just double check that. Wow. 1d12 plus 3. Uh, 8 rolled plus 3. 
Okay. Um, and you just see as um, as Ivor just decapitates the other goblin that stood next to Splug. Splug is now stood uh, in the middle <laughs> of the darkness with two goblins just at the full, at either side of his, either side of his uh, feet. Um, just kind of now alone. There's two barbarians, yourself and then Saga, just in front of him, and Johan just behind. Um, not looking good for him. Um, but it is uh, their turn. So. Hmm. So. Splug is going to disengage. Of course. No! Come back here! And he is going to run past your barbarian, Sergei. And he is going to run further into the darkness. In the same direction that the other goblin that uh, just disappeared ran. Which is around the camp to your left. Uh... <clears throat> So we have now three other goblins that are engaged with um, Thoric's barbarian boar. Um, now they're kind of bathed in a lot of light right now. Um, so they are going to... Hmm, what are they going to do? Let me think about this. Let me think about this. Yeah, one of them is going to disengage and is going to flee into the darkness the other way around the camp. Um, and then you just see that goblin just disappear into the darkness. Um, hmm. The other, the other two, uh, they actually yeah they're also going to disengage and they're going to run and follow so those three goblins are basically sticking together uh running into the darkness um okay yeah that will be them uh you however sergey mm. um you do hear bow being pulled back and an arrow firing off at you from the direction that Splug ran in. Uh, and that is going to be how much is that going to be? Uh, that is going to be 12 against your AC. My AC is 11 so that hits. Ooh! Okay. Um, so another arrow flies through the air and just pierces your armour. Um, and that's going to be seven piercing damage against Ooh. you, sir. That Ooh. is a good hit. Very good hit. Um, and you hear a little giggle um, as uh, something... Uh, you hear a little giggle and you hear footsteps running away from you um, further into the darkness. So now, that brings us to Johan. So now, Johan... Basically, you've seen goblins run off in all directions into the darkness. Um, you can't see exactly where they are. You just know their sort of general direction. You're bathed in light from um, from Boar's axe. And there's the, the camp directly in front of you. What would you like to do? I, I take it that Splug didn't run past me to run away. Correct. Hmm. Can I see him? Uh, no. Am I closest to him? Uh, either Saga or Sergei will likely be closest to him because you've come from behind and they've, uh, they've ran, from when you're looking at the camp, they've ran around the right-hand side of the camp. Are there any goblins left in the camp? Uh, not that you can see. Hmm. I, uh... I run over to Sergei and um, 
with his very, very serious face on. I'm so angry right now, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> I say, this is your work, I take it. Um. Uh. Uh. uh, 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 well, uh not intended, but yes. <laughs> it's never intended. <laughs> Fine. What do we do? Do we stay here and wait for them to come back, or do we go after them? I'm killing tonight. Your hand's actually pleasantly and happily surprised by that reaction. <laughs> it's a bad influence. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what to. I tell you what, actually, I might use an action to hide and try and maybe goad them out. And maybe I can get off some kind of ambush going mm, as it's still dark. Maybe I can try and hide behind a tree. Mm. There are there are some bushes and trees around. Um, One would assume. Yeah. Um, so you kind of manage to crouch behind a bush of some kind and just lie in wait. Uh, do you want to give me a stealth check though, just in case? Ah, come on. That'll be uh, an eleven. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're you're you crouch down behind a bush. And you uh, you lie in wait, ready to ready to ambush. Um, I suppose. Uh, oh, hide is an action, isn't it? Never mind. Um, cool. All right. Uh, that then brings us to Saga and Grigor. Uh, so Saga, okay. you've seen goblins run off. You're facing out of the camp, so you've seen goblins run off to your left, which is the direction Splug went in as you're looking out into the darkness, and also saw goblins run the other way as well. The camp and the fire is just behind you. Can I see them enough to, like, target my crossbow? Um, you can see just from where you are, you can see just on the outskirts, on the opposite side of the camp from where you are, mm -hmm. um, you can see two of the goblins that ran past or near Thoric's side of the camp. Um, okay. I am going to... Let's see. Yeah, let's, let's aim at those. I'm just debating whether to use a spear to die or not. Let's not use one now. Okay. I'm gonna aim my crossbow. Is this still at disadvantage? Uh, it will be, yes, because they yeah. are in the darkness, unfortunately. Um, Why did I have to play a human? <laughs> <laughs> because the limitations are fun. Nine! Nine! Um... So you fire off your crossbow into the darkness and hit nothing but darkness. I'm going to use action surge okay. to do it again. I'm literally having flashbacks to like what episode six, and I, <laughs> and I hate it. I bloody hate it. Well, one of them was a natural one, so a five to hit. Um, so you're just firing off your crossbow bolts, hoping to hit something, but just. Oh. You, oh. you hear a doing -doing -doing as one of the crossbow bolts hits a tree in the... <laughs> okay. Um, that's my turn. Okay, um, you've still got Grigor. Yeah. I'm going to tell Grigor to go towards Boar who has the light. Yeah. And, like, see if he can see any that way. Go and slaughter them i'm tired <laughs> so gets tired she's like you go and kill them <laughs> um so you see uh boar run towards mm -hmm. the the edge of the light from mm -hmm. uh, sorry grigor you see grigor run towards the edge of boar's light um and you see him clock the same um mm -hmm. goblins that you saw um but they're too far away from him for him to engage in melee this round can I use my movement still? You can use your movement still, yeah. I'm gonna also move towards 
It's it, also it, light. In the same direction of Grigor. It's Grigor, so you kind of stood next to him. Not like not not like hand in hand, but like he's, I'm like nearish. Nearish. Okay. Yeah, nearish. That's fine. Not too close. Uh, not too close. Mm. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Cool. So Thoric and Boar, you're up. Right. You cool. basically have just seen Saga and Grigor basically run straight past you. <laughs> um, you've got Boar directly in front of you as you're looking out of camp to the south uh, with his enlightened battle axe. And you've seen goblins run off again to your left and to your right. And you can make out, um, because a lot of these goblins you've seen have actually hidden themselves behind bushes and trees, uh, you can only make out the two goblins that Saga and Grigor were running towards, uh, which are back behind you on the other side of camp. Uh, do we get a general sense of how many there are? Uh, you get very much a, a good sense. So in total, um, obviously you dropped two. But um, of what remains, there are, from what you've seen, there are two goblins that you can see and another three, including Splug, hiding somewhere. Right. Hmm. What direction was Splug? Uh, Splug ran towards the east to your left. How far away is that roughly from me? Um, from where you last saw him... Uh, that's going to be, let's call it 30, 40 feet. So just outside of your movement range. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to tell... Um, what's his name? Org? Uh, or Org? Or, or, the, the, or your 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 barbarian is boar. Boar, boar. Sorry, you three all look look the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. you, you've you, your mothers weren't very imaginative when they named you. Igor, Ivor, Grigor, <laughs> or you know, <laughs> the fun. Anyway, the business. <laughs> or, um. Do me a huge favour and would you just like sprint in that general direction? I want to point to the east where I think Splug might be hiding. So my my intention mm -hmm. is to have Boar dash mm -hmm. so that he might illuminate where Splug is. Mm -hmm. And then I want to throw Gladys at him. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So I'm kind of like trotting my 25 feet sort of behind him, kind of scanning the trees as he illuminates them. Okay, sure. Do you want to give me a perception check? Love to. Okay, okay, okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. 14. 14. Okay. Um, so you you sprint after Boar, um, or rather, he sprints ahead of you and you jog just behind him. Um, and you see the you see the light passing over some of the trees and the bushes. You don't manage to catch a glimpse of Splug, but you do see uh, one of the other goblins. Um, he's about thirty feet away after you've done your move to the northeast from where you are. He'll do. I'll throw Gladys at him. <laughs> I thought you might. Let's roll yeah. the hit. <laughs> Just like ah, it's not Splug, but hell. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> I miss Gladys. That's uh, a seventeen to hit. A seventeen. Whoa. Okay, so you hurl Gladys through the air, a... <laughs> and you just manage to just embed this axe into the back of this goblin. Let's roll for damage. For full six for eight damage. <laughs> okay. Uh... Okay, yeah, so you, you just embed this axe in his back and you just see this goblin just go head first into a bush. He's down. <laughs> Throwing his little fist pump, like, one down! <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose that's probably your turn up, isn't it, Thoric? Uh, yeah, I, I think he feels he's feeling pretty... Even he was like, did you see... 
None of you saw that because you can't see. <laughs> <sighs> well, they can because of the light. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'm just like, what? did you did you see that? <laughs> did, did they? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Who said that? Sergey is like glazed over with anger. Well, it looks like Millhouse. <laughs> Shaking. Sergey, you're up. Right. done. <laughs> um, very well. So you've got Thoric would... about ten feet behind you. He's just hurled Gladys to the east. Uh, you've still not found. You still don't know where Splug is at this point. There are more goblins That's to the fine. northwest. So, I would like to walk in the direction that Splug went. Okay. Slowly, All right. with the rapier yeah. dragging through the the leaves and the foliage. Okay. And then okay. Sergei's eyes, glazed over with anger, start to glow this kind of blackish red. And I would like to cast Dissonant Whispers again at second level. I will quickly read the description for you. Okay. You whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear. Ah, so you don't even I be don't able to have see to have him. Eyes. Mm-hmm. And I would like to whisper, Splug, return to the earth with your foul ways. Um, and mixed in with the whispers i would like there to be like the sounds of like sailors falling off ships to their doom Ooh. and this kind of horrible screeching of like sirens and stuff and he needs to make a wisdom saving throw is it? yeah gotta be 12. okay imagine if this doesn't work after all this that is a four <gasps> 46 damage then <gasps> 46 damage. And we'll have to use his entire move slash reaction to move as far away from me as possible. 8, 10, 15 hit points of damage. Okay. You you suddenly hear a shriek, a blood-curdling shriek as you see Splug emerge from a bush just 10 feet away from you and he runs north past Boar um, and he's just holding his ears and screaming. How are you finishing him, Sergei? I would like, as soon as I see him, Sergei's head just to snap to him, locking on and everything focusing in on Splug. It's going to be a little bit gruesome, audience. As the intensity of the screeches go, I would like Splug's head to just implode. Oh! 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to do this turn? Uh, as a bonus action, I'd like to then just turn to Thoric and go, Thoric, you are looking so much younger than I remember, and cast Bardic Inspiration as a bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> Thoric's like, I mean, that's a lie, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so it's now um, the goblins' turns. Um, you see the two goblins that are um, on the other side of camp that you could see, and uh, you just see them watch Splug. Well, you see this at least, Thoric. Um, you see them wa- watch Splug drop to the ground with his what remains of his head and they just you just see them leg it beyond the camp into the darkness um and then you just you see another one of the goblins just pop his head up out of a bush watch his mates run run past and he joins them and flees off into the darkness and that brings us out of initiative. <sighs> Sergey, you son of a bitch. I told you I so. Told
I told sorry. you so. Hi, Sergey. I'm glad you're alive. Of course. You turn up, and the second you turn up, a party of goblins decides to kill us in the night. Well, we he... killed them first. With that, he pops a congratulatory hand on Sergo's shoulder and goes, it's good to see you again. Likewise, Johan. And then, I'm glad, I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're alive, Sergo. It is good to see you all well. Uh, one second, I have some unfinished business, and I'd like to head over to Splug's corpse. Oh, oh God. Did Sergo Guys, go to I'm prison? I'm sitting on it. I'm not doing anything. Oh, my word. I was going to say, did Sergo go to prison? What, what happened to him, man? <laughs> um, He's no, got, like, it's... a face tattoo. <laughs> yeah. He's got a tear. Um, I'd just like to go over to uh, Splug's body, just kick it, and then return back. <laughs> <laughs> um, goes to like he sort of goes to hug Sergey and then well done <laughs> just sort of like bumps him on the shoulder thank you um what happened to all of you who is this who is that and who is he uh um <laughs> Uh, oh, we'll let Saga field this one. Saga, why are you blushing? They're they're from my from my from the tribe. I got captured and Thorikin Johan found me, freed me. We had a fight, and now I'm in charge of three these three. Oh, that so, is yeah. good. Well, not not really, but oh, it's all due. Well, free extra to the crowd. Um, yeah. Um, is that why you've gone red? Yes, yes, that and the exertion, and I haven't slept. And and where were you? Uh, she tells Johan. Well, I, I, I went. I went for a walk. Okay, um, well, I'm glad the goblins didn't get you. Well, it's good to see nothing's changed. Good to see I didn't miss much. Um, More importantly, where have you been? Oh, you know, uh, here and there. (laughs) We don't know. (laughs) No. Oh, I'm sure you know, you know, here and there, you know. Uh, No. I, I just had to tell everything that's happened and you get away with oh, here and there. Yes. How, how is... How is that... I give up. <laughs> I need you to clear my mind. Of what? Oh, of you know those crazy nasty dreams we had? It was a little bit intense. Dreams? You didn't mention dreams. Yeah, no. that's the first I've oh. heard of it. I uh, I didn't tell them about the dreams, Sergey. Oh, don't tell them about the other stuff that happened that night as well, then, Johan. <sighs> what kind of All dream? All right, you two talk. Um, yep. Do you want me to go first, or do you want to do, like, sentence by sentence? Oh, no, you go ahead. I'm, I'm just going to sit down and get uh, your old whetstone out and start sharpening the old sword. We were accosted by... Oh, I don't really know what they were. Um, and I, the, we, everything went black, and then we woke up to a nice lady who looked after us. Hmm. We thought we were dying. Yes. And she saved I us. Thought it was you, Saga, but then she uh, she said something nice, and I was like, "Oh, can't be Saga then." <laughs> That's actually quite funny. <laughs> what were the dreams? 
Um, um, uh, what kind of dreams? Oh, you know. Oh, him. don't don't you do today? Literally, Come on. my entire past is in front of us. You two better start talking. He never told me his dream, and I never told him mine. We just agreed well, to let it go unspoken. Well, start talking. I shoo the barbarians off. <laughs> Johan looks at Sergei as if to say, you first. Um, um, okay. Uh, well, I was on a familiar ship. Um, cast out to sea. And, uh, well, I'm sure we all have that one person that we killed, that we see haunt our nightmares. For me, it was a... Oh, boy. Quite literally. No, it was actually a boy. It was a young boy. Um, and, uh, I may have killed him. And discovered he was, well, let's just say it, the sprinkle of humanity finally kicked in. Um, I uh, produce the parchment with all the notes on it. Well, why did you kill him? Uh, we were attacking the ship. He was on the ship. Okay. Yeah, he had this on him. Um, I've been trying to learn it and hope one day I can play it for... Well, it looks like it was intended for his family. It's called, uh... The Death of a Bear. I don't think he had quite had the lyrics that still mismatched uh, I don't and the writing is hard to see so I tried to fill in the blanks so you were what a pirate uh... and uh, yep you're a dwarf and you're a scary fighter and Johan is well like you know when you Pick out a bit of dirt and there's a worm in there. That's kind of your hand. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, I suppose uh, I would fall under that category. Um, they used to call me the whaler. And uh, it wasn't because I hunted whales. It was the other way of saying the whaler. As in whaling. Ah. Yeah. That kind of, yeah. Well, we can believe that. Um, they also used to say uh, I smelt quite good. So it's... Uh, They did. And where did that come from? My good smell. Like, oh! You don't mm -hmm. think? Mm -hmm. kind of... uh, no, let's just put that on down. No, no. He's, can... he's somehow worse than three three of them. Oh, there's a barnacle under there. Let me get that off. And Johan, what did. What was your dream? Well, nothing like that. I was visited in a dream by an Astriana, except it wasn't her. She was distant, and she kept giving me these cryptic messages and warnings about trials yet to come, and that I would need my strength and my skill and faith in myself in order to do it. I don't know what she meant. Whether it was mm. Harmon Cost or Glassstaff or Gundren and Rockseeker or perhaps something else. Okay. I don't know what she meant. Do you know what caused these dreams? I thought it was the uh, multi bit of bread I had earlier in the day. But, uh, I clap him on the shoulder with the back of my hand. Ouch. We thought we were dying. Uh, 
And if what I saw when I was dying is what actually happens when you enter death, then uh, they have a lot of mistakes to do over. Do over? I meant. Feels like a while ago. Uh, yeah. Well, Sergei, you're not the only one with regrets. Or strange dreams. Yeah. But the good. Um, the good news is that uh, Sergei, the red wizard we were hunting, is now dead. Oh, no! That is actually good news. It is. It's very good news. I think. Well, turns out he had nothing to do with glass stuff. So, mm. oh, trail ran cold for that one. Did you find uh, the castle? We're on the trail. We Ooh. saw it before nightfall or something. Far off, maybe. It's less than a long day maybe. for you. And we believe we may have found Gundren Rockseeker, or maybe his body. Oh. Yes, we, uh, well, Thoric and I, we had to ask a banshee. <laughs> but what one? That's not something I want to repeat. I hope never to see anything like that again. Tch, you and me both. <clears throat> right, well... Bedtime? <laughs> I think so. Mm. Gives uh, Sergei another pat on the shoulder. Johan, can you read me a bedtime story like you always do? No. Okay. I just... I have a feeling. I hope I'm right. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But we might have to fight. And she, you know, points towards Bobby. Maybe more of those in the future. Should we kill them now, just to make sure? Probably not the best idea. Okay, good. You are chieftain. Who's left to oppose you? It's something Riddle said. What did he say? He thinks... He thinks... Trial is still alive. He's dead. You've said many times. Who's dead? I thought he was. That's what they told me. They gave me his necklace. That's what I have his sword. That's his sword? Well, it's the one he gave me. Ooh. It's not his. He, he got it on a raid. It's far too... You know, they can't build stuff that nice. Who is this, um... Drive. Her ex. Oh, Johan, that's awkward. Don't worry. Plenty more fish in the sea, Johan. I'm sure we can find someone. <sighs> Johan narrows his eyes at Sergei as if to say, What? Oh. <laughs> uh, wrong signal. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I... I have, I have no proof. It's just what Riddle thought. And he... he... He must be wrong. He must be wrong. What makes you think that he might be still alive? I just said what what That's what Riddle thinks, that's what E three think. Well, the smart one of them thinks. Perhaps they're lying. Yes, I hope so. I really hope so. I don't 
I don't want to go back. I take a step towards her. If they come back again, we'll kill them again until there isn't any more. Do you promise that? It's what I do. We should um, get some sleep. Yeah, we should. So, you all settle down for the night. Getting plenty of rest before you venture forth, you hope, to the castle tomorrow. Plenty of long rest? And you can have a long rest. <laughs> An uninterrupted long rest? <laughs> Thank you, Master. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that is where we shall end this week's episode. Uh, so thank you, of course, as always, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, rate and review on your podcatcher of choice. And we will catch you guys next week. <laughs>